you'll at least experience one mental breakdown during your first year of medical school. Really difficult content that you just find yourself not able to understand. Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Lena. I'm a second year medical student in the United States. In this video, I'll be sharing five things I wish I knew before starting medical school. If you're starting medical school this year or you plan on attending medical school in upcoming years, please continue watching. First thing I learned is that you really don't need any textbooks for medical school. Although the professors might be saying during orientation you need this textbook or that textbook, the fact is that you don't really need to buy any of them unless you just really like collecting textbooks related to medicine. When you actually start classes, you don't really have time to read any of the textbooks. The lecture slides and outside resources will usually be sufficient for you to learn all of the content. That is if you just want to purely learn the content for the exam. If you do want to broaden your knowledge, of course, textbooks or other books related to the subject would help you dive deeper. But if it's just purely for learning the basic knowledge, you don't need to purchase any textbooks before medical school. It's super easy to get excited before school starts, celebrate that you're fully a medical student finally, and you are willing to invest hundreds of dollars to purchase all those textbooks, but really there's no need to. If you really want to invest your money in something to celebrate that you are going to be a student doctor, then invest on a good suturing kit or a good stethoscope. What you do need eventually is the first aid book that will help you prepare for the step one USMLE exam that is coming up during your second year of medical school. So eventually you will have to purchase or rent one of those. The second thing I wish I knew earlier before starting medical school is to learn to say no to certain opportunities presented to you in medical school. As a medical student, once you reach this stage of your life, you might see a lot of opportunities just come to you even if you don't ask for it. Research, a leadership position would definitely come easier than when you're in college. First of all because the student population in medical schools are usually smaller than those in undergraduate schools. Also title of being a medical student just carries a lot more credibility and weight than a college student. When I first entered medical school I initially said yes to a lot of opportunities. Oh gosh, hi! You see yourself? When first entering medical school, I found myself saying yes to a lot of opportunities presented to me only to find myself feeling overwhelmed and stressed and learning the lesson of balance the hard way. At the end, I did learn to give up few of the commitments. However, if I was really mindful in selecting the opportunities and choosing where to commit my time to. Um, initially, I wouldn't have to deal with such burnout before learning the lesson. So whether it's like a leadership position, whether it's a research opportunity, take time and think about it more before committing to it. Think about whether it ties into the career goals that you have for yourself. What's the time commitment like? Does your schedule with all of the classes and other commitments let you do this? Will you have any difficulty in incorporating it into your schedule and how could you get support if you would have difficulty in the future? Is there a good supporting network? Well, they fully understand the time commitments of a medical student. So those are all factors that you should consider before saying yes to a certain opportunity. Your time in medical school is very limited and also very precious. So take the time to make a mindful decision beneficial for you in the long term. Third thing I wish I knew is that if you want to get published, start with case reviews or review articles. Depending on your career goals, you may or may not want to go into a specialty that's competitive. And since step one and classes are becoming pass and fail, more weight is being put on research. In order to publish fast, instead of doing basic science research or a long-term clinical project, I would highly recommend start with a case review, a patient case, or start with review articles on a certain topic. So these are relatively easier to write 
takes shorter time to write and gets published easier. I'm not suggesting against doing any clinical research or basic, oh gosh. <laughs> I'm simply suggesting start with case reviews or review articles that will take lesser time to write. Fourth thing is that look for funded opportunities to travel. So whether you're interested in presenting an abstract of a research paper that you wrote or whether you are just simply interested in a certain specialty or found a conference related to area of medicine that you're interested in, look for funded opportunities. Ask a dean ask the student diversity office if you could apply for funding for any of these opportunities. Usually medical schools will allocate certain funds for students to go on certain conferences, present their research. So always, always ask if there are certain funds for that before you decide to use your own money to do all of these cool things. Another way to do it is ask the conference holders themselves whether they provide any fundings or learning scholarships for medical students who have no money and who are still paying tuition and usually these conferences would have limited amount of funding allocated for medical students so they could encourage medical students to attend the conference and maybe get more interested in the subject or specialty that they are passionate about. And it really never hurts to ask or email because what you are asking for is very reasonable given that you are a medical student and interested in the subject especially. Fifth thing I wish I knew before attending medical school is try to have lots of fun and life still will go on when you are in medical school. You'll at least experience one mental breakdown during your first year of medical school. It could be due to a discouraging exam score, really difficult content that you just find yourself not able to understand. It could also be unpromising research results. They will happen for sure during your first year of medical school, but they should never deter you from living up your life in medical school. Always, always try to keep connected with your friends and family and ground yourself in that one hobby that you absolutely love. These are the actual things that will make you keep on going during medical school. You need all of that to keep the momentum going in this arduous journey of medicine. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope these five things I shared provided you with some insight into medical school to help you prepare for your future and medicine. Please comment, like, and subscribe to my channel if you are interested in more content as such and more helpful strategies and tips from medical school for studying in general. And if you want to see more vlogs related to med school, follow my Instagram also for short reels and more medical school related content. And as always, I will see you next time.